Hi there, my name is Gabriel Alcali over here from Advanced Test Equipment Rentals and we're here today to go over Kalis's new IPA series Pimp Tester. We're going to go over the testing of the low PIM load and also the PIM source and uh, those are required tests before you actually get testing to ensure the PIM Tester is actually working correctly. So here's the PIM Tester and uh, it all comes in one case and uh, the neat thing about the IPA series is this is the Kalis's first battery powered tester. This is a 2 by 20 watt unit and uh, all the accessories and cables would be supplied. So we're going to set this up over here. And uh, so this is the tester. Uh, it has a touch screen right here which you could, it's fully functional. You could do all the tests running through this touch screen or you could use this uh, standard iPad mini which comes with Kalis's IPA application which we're actually going to get started and it's going to automatically connect once the PIM tester gets going and now we're connected as you can see from the iPad software and the first test that we're actually going to get started is using the low PIM load verification so in this kit it's going to include the low PIM load and also the torque wrenches needed to secure that and the interconnect cable. So I'm going to take this out of the package and we're going to get started by uh, connecting one end of the low PIM cable onto the RF output of the PIM tester. And we're actually going to have to use uh, the torque wrench for this since we want to make sure it's torqued down real good. The torque wrench would actually click as soon as it has the right torque level, which you guys are about to see. So just click. So that's nice and tight. All right. So now we're going to connect the low pin load onto the end of this test cable. So now we're all set up. So we could either use this iPad mini or we could go through the actual front panel. So we're actually going to see both. So now that we have the low pin load connected, we're going to press the RF on button. And now the plan is we should be reading below 107 dBm. So the RF is on and the PIM tester is reading yeah, definitely below 107 dBm. So that means that up to this end of the cable, we do not have any problems. So now we're going to turn off the RF, and we're going to move to doing the, the known PIM source test. So we're going to take off the test board cable for this test. grab this uh, source. Now this source should be reading at minus 80 dBm plus or minus 5. So we get nice and snug on here. And then use our handy torque wrench. And make sure it clicks. to the iPad mini and we're going to turn the RF on back on. As you can see here the PIM tester is reading minus 80 dBm so that's within the minus 80 plus or minus 5 dBm so we know it's reading PIM correctly. So we're going to turn the RF off now. So now we have an actual setup for an actual PIM test. 
So over here we have a damaged load, which is going to simulate a tower source with high pin values. So all we have to do is press the RF on button on the pin tester. So we're going to turn on the RF power using the iPad mini. And as you can see that it's reading so much PIM that's off this chart. And if you go down here, you can actually see using the time versus PIM feature that this load is um, way beyond the specifications of a normal PIM test. And now we, uh, we know that's a high PIM source.